Welcome to the Anatomy and Physiology series on the heart. This is Dr. Wallace. Today we're going to talk about the heart's conduction system, which is essentially the electrical system that generates and distributes action potentials to the myocardium of the heart. A heartbeat refers to one single full cardiac cycle. In a heartbeat or a cardiac cycle, all four of the heart's chambers will contract. We'll see that the heart contracts in series. First, the two atria contract, then the two ventricles contract. There are two types of cardiac muscle cells that are involved in a cardiac cycle or heartbeat. We have cells of the conduction system, which are the electrical cells responsible for initiating and coordinating the heartbeat. And then we have the actual contractile cells. These are the cells that are going to contract to generate the force that's necessary to propel blood through the body. The heart is special in that it dis displays automaticity or autorhythmicity. This means that the heart automatically contracts without the need for neural or hormonal stimulation. This is very different from other types of muscle. If you remember back to skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle had to be stimulated by a motor neuron before it would contract. Cardiac muscle is very different from this. Cardiac muscle does not need to be stimulated by a neuron or hormone in order to contract. This is because its specialized cells of the conduction system initiate and distribute these electrical impulses or action potentials that generate contractions. The conduction system includes the cells of the sinoatrial node, which we find in the upper wall of the right atrium, the atrioventricular node, which we find at the base of the right atrium, between the right atrium and the ventricles, and then finally, numerous different conducting pathways that we find that have conducting cells scattered throughout the myocardium of both the atria and the ventricles. Here at the top of the right atrium, you see the sinoatrial node. Down at the bottom of the right atrium, between the atria and the ventricles, we see the atrioventricular node, or AV node. All of these other purple lines that we see here are showing us the different conducting cell pathways, or the different pathways that contain um, numerous conducting cells. In the atrium, these conducting cells are organized into what we call internodal pathways. They're internodal because they're located between the two nodes, between the sinoatrial node up top and the atrioventricular node at the bottom. These internodal pathways interconnect the two nodes. In other words, they take the action potential or electrical stimulus from the SA node down to the atrioventricular or AV node. And these internodal pathways also pass the action potential or electrical stimulus to the actual contractile cells of the atria to stimulate the atria to contract. Down in the ventricles, we see that these conducting cells are organized into the AV bundle, which takes the stimulus down into the interventricular septum, which remembers the wall that separates the two ventricles. And then we see that that AV bundle separates into the right bundle branch, which goes down the right side of the septum, and the left bundle branch, which goes down the left side of the septum. Finally, we see that at the bottom or apex of the heart, we have the Purkinje fibers. These are the fibers that go around the apex of the heart and distribute the action potential or electrical stimulus to the contractile cells of the ventricles. Essentially, all of these conducting cell pathways down in the ventricles are responsible for carrying the electrical stimulus down to the apex of the heart and then at the apex of the heart, passing that stimulus to the contractile cells of the ventricles or the ventricular myocardium. When we look at the conducting cells that are present in the SA node and AV node, we see that these cells are special because they, um, they have what we call a pre-potential or a pacemaker potential. The resting membrane potential of the cells of the SA and AV nodes are not stable. Instead, their membrane potential gradually depolarizes to its, threshold to its threshold voltage. When we look at the cells of the SA node and the AV node, we see that their normal membrane potential or resting membrane potential is about negative 60 millivolts. Their threshold potential, we'll see, the, the threshold or the potential that they need to get to in order to generate an action potential is about negative 45 millivolts. 
Now, the reason that these cells gradually get to that, that, that threshold voltage or they gradually depolarize is because the sodium channels present in their plasma membranes are leaky. These sodium channels slowly allow sodium to enter into the cells. Remember, when we looked at the concentration of ions inside and outside of the cells, we see that there's much more sodium located outside of our cells. So if we have channels here in the plasma membrane that allow sodium to leak through, diffusion says that this sodium is going to enter into the cell. Remember that sodium is positively charged. So as this sodium enters into our cells of the SA node and AV node, it brings positive charges into the cell. As these positive charges enter the cell, the cell gets less and less and less negative. And eventually enough sodium enters to bring the cell up to its threshold voltage of negative 45 millivolts. And then it's going to generate an action potential. Notice that it does this without any interference or any stimulation from neurons whatsoever. Hey, simply because these sodium channels are leaky, the sodium slowly comes in and slowly depolarizes these cells to threshold and they're able to generate their own action potentials. Now, when we look at the SA node and the AV node, we see that their rate of depolarization differs. The SA node, which remember was at the top of the right atrium, depolarizes a lot faster than the AV node does. Hey, essentially, its, its channels are more leaky. It allows sodium to enter into the cells faster, so the cells get to threshold faster, and they generate action potentials faster. The SA node depolarizes on average between about 80 and 100 times per minute, whereas the AV node depolarizes slower, so it depolarizes only between 40 and 60 times per minute. Because this SA node depolarizes so much faster, it's able to start that action potential that will, ge that will generate or begin each of our heartbeats. So it's this SA node that establishes your heart rate. However fast this SA node depolarizes, that's how fast your heart's going to follow and how fast your heart's going to beat. So we say that the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart because it sets the pace that your heart's going to beat at. We're going to follow through a full cardiac cycle and look at all of the different conducting cells that are involved in generating a heartbeat. We begin up here at the SA node, again at the top of the right atrium. We said that our SA node was our pacemaker because it sets the, the, the pace that the heart's going to beat at. The, SA, the cells of the SA node eventually leak to threshold and generate an action potential, and that's how we um, generate our first electrical signals in the heart, which we're then going to eventually pass down into our atria here. Here you see this electrical stimulus or action potential traveling down the internodal pathways from the SA node up top down towards the AV node at the base of the atria. The stimulus is also going to be spread to the actual contractile cells of the atria, the cells that make up the myocardium of the atria. Once the action potential or electrical stimulus gets spread to one of the cells here in the atria, that stimulus is going to be passed from cell to cell to cell all throughout the contractile cells in the atria. The reason for that is that when we look at cardiac muscle cells, we see that they're interconnected by gap junctions. So our cardiac muscle cells look something like this. And where we have these two plasma membranes meet, we'll have a gap junction or a little channel present. What that means is that when positive charges enter this cell to depolarize this cell, those positive charges can cross right through this gap junction into the next cell and can depolarize that cell to threshold. Likewise, once that cell gets depolarized to the threshold, the positive charges can pass through the next gap junction and depolarize the next cell. So this action potential or this electrical stimulus spreads from cell to cell to cell all through the myocardium, much like dominoes falling. Once you knock that first domino over, the rest of them are going to fall in turn. The same thing here. 
Once we stimulate the muscle cells up here at the top of the atria, the rest of the cells are going to contract in a wave-like fashion. Again, that's because of the gap junctions that are present. Once the stimulus gets down here to the AV node between the atria and the ventricles, it's delayed. The reason for that is that the cells of the AV node are less efficient at passing that action potential from cell to cell to cell. So this signal, this action potential, ends up pausing at the AV node for about 100 milliseconds. Now this isn't on accident. The reason that we have this, this signal or action potential pause at the AV node is that it gives the atria enough time to contract in order to squeeze their blood down into the ventricles before we actually pass the stimulus down to the ventricles. After this um, signal or action potential pauses at the AV node, it's going to enter into this AV bundle, which will take that stimulus down into the interventricular septum. Notice we are not actually passing this stimulus for, for contraction down to the myocardium of the ventricles yet. So the ventricles aren't contracting yet. We're taking the stimulus down into the septum without stimulating the ventricles at this point. The AV bundle is going to relay or carry the stimulus to the two bundle branches. Again, we have a bundle branch that goes down the left side of the septum, and we have a bundle branch that goes down, to the, down the right side of the septum. Again, you notice the stimulus spreading in purple here. It has not actually gone to the bulk of the myocardium of the ventricles. The reason for that is that this cardiac skeleton here that goes around the sides of the septum prevents that action, for, action potential from spreading to the ventricles yet. It's very important that we're able to bring this stimulus down to the apex or the bottom um, of the heart before we start to stimulate the myocardium of the ventricles. So again, we have the left and the right bundle branches that carry this action potential down towards the apex of the heart, and they're going to relay that stimulus to our Purkinje fibers, our little fibers that curve all up around the apex of our heart. The bundle branches are also going to relay the stimulus to something called the moderator band. And what the moderator band is, is it's kind of like a little shortcut that takes this stimulus over to our papillary muscles. Remember when we look at our AV valves, they're secured with these little cords called cordae tendinae, and then we anchor those cords at the, the walls of our heart with these big muscular bulges called papillary muscles. What this moderator band right here does is it takes this action potential or stimulus for contraction over to these papillary muscles um, so that they can contract strongly and stabilize this AV valve before we actually tell the ventricle to contract. Again, notice that our contractile cells are not yet stimulated, so the ventricle is not contracting at this point. <clears throat> now, once we get this signal down here to the Purkinje fibers, it's the Purkinje fibers that actually distribute the impulse for contraction or the action potential to the contractile cells of the ventricles. Okay, this signal to contract is then passed from cell to cell to cell all throughout the ventricles. Again, the reason that the cells are able to pass the action potential from cell to cell is because these cardiac muscle cells are linked by gap junctions. Because we've passed the stimulus to contract to our ventricles at the apex first, um, the ventricles are going to contract in a wave-like fashion from the bottom up towards the top. This is important. If you remember the large vessels that are leading out of the heart are located up here at the top of our ventricles. Okay, so our pulmonary trunk comes out of the right ventricle right about here, and the aorta comes out of the left ventricle right about here. So our ventricles contracting from the bottom towards the top is going to push that blood up and out towards those vessels so that it can be ejected from the heart. Finally, we'll look at a couple conditions that exist um, when we have abnormal pacemaker function or abnormal function um, of our SA node. First is bradycardia. 
Brady refers to something that's slow um, or abnormally slow. So in this case, bradycardia is telling us that we have an abnormally slow heart rate. Typically, this refers to a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Tachy is rapid. So tachycardia is an abnormally fast heart rate. And here we're typically talking about a heart rate over 100 beats per minute. An ectopic pacemaker occurs when we have something besides the SA node acting as the pacemaker of the heart. So somewhere besides our normal pacemaker setting the, the rate for our heartbeat. This happens when abnormal cells in the heart start to generate really high rates of action potentials that surpass the rate of the SA node. This bypasses our normal conduction system um, and often generates not only a very rapid heart rate, but a very irregular path of the heart rate or of, of cardiac contraction. So this disrupts ventricular contractions and it decreases the pumping efficiency of the heart.